It's a classic story. Uh, It's in three of the four Gospels. It's a classic moment, a miracle moment. Jesus defies nature and walks across the water. In fact, it's such a well-known story that we have an expression, usually when referring to someone who we think, think is way too holy for their own good, that we say, oh, they walk on water, right? We're implying that they're perfect, that they're they're holy, godlike in some fashion, and it's invariably meant as a criticism. <clears throat> the story is well known, though. Jesus walks on the water. The disciples are out in the boat. Um, in this version, in Matthew's version, um, Peter steps out and starts walking on the water. He can do it too. It's a pretty, pretty awesome moment. I'm sure those first few steps, Peter was thinking to himself, holy cow, I can do it. And then he's afraid, and suddenly he can't do it. And he starts to sink, which I can't imagine would be too much of a scare for a fisherman. He can probably swim. I hope he can swim. Anyway, he calls out to Jesus. Jesus reaches out a hand and helps him. And we tell this story like it's about having a little bit of faith. You don't have enough is the thing, right? You always need to have more faith. We tell this story like it's a criticism of Peter when Jesus says, Oh, you of little, sorry, oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? You don't have enough faith, and it's because you doubted. I wonder why it was Peter and not Thomas. Maybe it's, Thomas has his own doubt story, right? He's the guy always asking the questions. Huh. Of course, Peter, it means rock, right? So that would be pretty awesome if he could walk on water and not sink, right? Because, you know, rocks sink like a stone, you know. The thing is, we always hear it as a criticism of how little faith Peter has. We apply it to ourselves. We're always thinking, we always think about faith from the perspective of not having enough. I can always have more. More, more, more. We think about a lot of things that way. I can always have more. But just like those other things, has it ever occurred to you that you have exactly what you need? Because that is really what this story is about. Let me change the tone of voice for you for a minute. Oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Peter, you had a little bit of faith. That's awesome. Why did you give up on it? It would be a different story. It would be a totally different story if instead of hearing it as Jesus criticizes Peter for a little bit of faith, he says, good for you. You had enough faith to step out of the boat. Yes. Out on the sea, a fisherman had enough, had enough faith to step out of the boat and think he wasn't going to sink. And in fact, he doesn't. Yay. How awesome is that? Let's not criticize Peter. He's the only one of the disciples in the boat. Remember, the boat's full of disciples. Peter's the only one who actually will step out. That's how much faith he had. He had just the right amount to step out. I suppose, I suppose to be fair, we could tell this story as he, Jesus was, in fact, not talking to Peter. He was talking to the other 11 and saying, oh, you guys with so little faith that you couldn't even step out of the boat? Think about it for a minute. Here's Jesus saying, you have a little faith, and it was enough to get you to take the risk of stepping out of the boat, thinking you could walk on the water, just like me. You know, me, Jesus, the one who just recently commissioned you all as disciples by saying, go and be me to everyone else. He didn't say, go and be like me. Remember this a few weeks ago now. 
But when Jesus commissions the disciples, he doesn't say, go and be like me for people. He says, go and be me to people. And here's Peter doing just that. He literally has the faith of Jesus. And that's enough. And that's, that's the thing about faith. You, we we want to quantify it. We want to measure it. We, wanna, we, we think we need to have more. We always need to have more, right? Because if we had more faith, it would make this thing happen the way we want it to happen. It, except it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You can't quantify faith. You have just the right amount of faith that you need. Just like Peter. Just the right amount of faith to step out and start the journey. And you take some steps and everything's good. And then something happens. The opposite of faith happens. It's not doubt, by the way. It's fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Doubt. Doubt gets a bad rap. We, we want to exchange fear for doubt. And say doubt because that way we can remind people it's not a good idea to ask questions. You shouldn't doubt. And doubting involves asking questions. Don't ask me any questions. I'm just going to tell you how it is. And that's how it is. Don't doubt. Except asking questions is how we learn and grow. And that's the thing. Peter had just the right amount of faith. A little bit. Just the right amount to step out of the boat and take the risk. And he starts walking. Fear comes into play. In our journeys, when we step out on the road of life, in our journeys, fear happens a lot. You know it does because of the number of times Jesus says, don't be afraid. We've talked about this before. The point is, when Peter becomes afraid, it affects his faith in Not just Jesus, but himself. And he starts to sink. And what does he do? He reminds us that the faith that he had so little of was in himself because he doesn't say, I can do it. He says, help me, Jesus. He calls out to the one he knows will save him. When we encounter fear on our li- in our lives, we want to say, help me. And we want to say, help me to a God that we know is there. And that's exactly what happens in the story. Peter starts to sink. He's afraid. He says, help me. And who is there? Jesus might as well have said, I'm right here, Peter. I'm right. You're fine. I'm right here. And it's all good. You have enough faith. I have enough faith. It's not about amounts of faith. It's about how we use it and our willingness to use it. It's about our willingness to step out. You have enough. And when, when we're afraid and we run into trouble and we need help, we reach for help. We call out to God and say, help me. And Jesus appears. It might be in the form of a friend or a neighbor, but there's Jesus when we ask for help. And we shouldn't be afraid to ask. Not asking for help isn't about having faith. It isn't. You, you have enough faith to step out on the water. Have enough faith to ask for help. You have enough. Do ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. God is there. You have enough faith already. We can grow that faith as we learn. And in fact, the disciples do, don't they? Not just the one who had enough to step out, but all of them. By living with Jesus and learning to live like Jesus. That's, that's one of the things about the stories of Jesus. I, I, I like to wonder about stuff like, did he have vacation time? What did he do for a hobby? You know, did he like to play games? Or, you know, he obviously liked to eat and drink with people. 
I like to sit around with the disciples and chat about stuff that didn't have anything to do with religion, theology, or God, or anything like that, just ordinary, everyday stuff. It's that that all does have something to do with God. It's life. That's the thing about that, is that it's life. When we live and learn to live like Jesus, it's life, right? It's life-giving. That's the journey. And we keep asking for Jesus' help. And we learn from Jesus. That's also... This is a moment in which I would say, that's also why we all gather here. Wherever you are, that's why we gather here. See, the story is not just about an individual. The boat's full of disciples. This isn't just a story about Peter having enough faith to step out. What if the boat, let's say the boat is us, the, the church, or our communities, Because it isn't just about communities of religion. It's about communities of faith. What if the boat is about communities of faith? It's not just about one person having enough to step out. It's about all of us being willing to do that. And the rest weren't. They had the faith, they just didn't use it. That's the point here. You have all the faith you need. We need to step out and use it. And we need to learn as we use it. We need to learn that when Jesus says, don't be afraid, he doesn't mean it's not okay to be scared or flip a switch and instantly be brave and courageous. What he means is, I'm here. Don't be afraid, Peter. You can do it. Oh, you're starting to sing. Don't be afraid, I'm here. We have enough faith. You have enough faith, and we collectively have exactly the faith that we need. What we need is to use it. What we need is to take the risk and step out of the boat. I hope, I hope, Every time we gather as a community, whether that's in person here in the building, which I'm going to use metaphorically in a second because we're not, obviously, right now. We are where we are, but we are still a community. I hope that every time you step out of the boat, you go with faith, knowing you have just the right amount. Go and use it. That's what it's there for. And if you need help, God is there.